In my previous video, I made a statement that the Americas lacked animals that could be domesticated, while Africa lacked farmland. But what if this was inversed? Sure, the Americas had plenty of farmland, but why didn't Africa ever domesticate the animals that are native there? Why didn't ancient Africans ride zebras? This is the tsetse fly, a very dangerous African insect whose bite can cause two diseases, African trypanosomiasis, which I'll call trip, and human sleeping sickness. Human sleeping sickness is relatively uncommon, but trip is not. So when Europeans arrived in Africa, their horses did not survive any journeys. The region known as the Tsetse fly belt of Africa is well known for the amount of flies there, so it made exploring Africa very difficult for Europeans and especially their horses. Most animals native to the region, of course, are immune to trip, including zebras. So why didn't ancient Africans domesticate zebras? Could zebras have been used to withstand the fly belt? That's what many Europeans were wondering as explorers reached Inner Africa. Walter Rothschild, son of the great Nathan Rothschild, was a well-known zoologist in Great Britain in the late 1800s. He had a collection of 300,000 bird skins, millions of butterflies, and had the largest private zoological collection ever, not to mention a breed of giraffe was named after him, the Rothschild giraffe. Rothschild, unlike his relatives, was more interested in science than banking, and wanted to learn more about domesticating zebras. Rothschild eventually made some progress and created the well-known zebra carriage, which he drove throughout London. He even drove it up to Buckingham Palace once to show that zebras could be used for transportation. More progress was made during the time. In 1893, Captain Horace Hayes, in his book Points of the Horse, said he could train a mature mountain zebra to be ridden in only two days. In 1907, Dr. Rosendo Ribeiro of Kenya rode a zebra to get to houses that called for him. So it is possible to ride a zebra, but Rothschild never did anything like this. He realized that zebras are smaller than horses, and they probably weren't strong enough to be ridden just like them. Secondly, zebras are very aggressive. Zebras know how to kick lions, the main predator that they face on the savanna, and their social structure, which is known as a harem, pits females against each other in deadly fights if a less dominant female even steps ahead of a more dominant female. That's not to say that zebras can't be ridden today. Shia Inman was only 10 when she began horseback riding and by her freshman year adopted a zebra named Joey. Inman is 5 foot 7 and her zebra is 4 foot 6, so the size difference could put a little strain on the zebra but surprisingly, Inman, who was 18 in early 2013, was able to train Joey to go on rides for short distances. She says that zebras have a short attention span and their inability to remember things, like horses, means that treats are the best way to go. Of course, there really isn't much of a reason, in my opinion, to ride zebras. Horse-zebra hybrids are a much better alternative if you just want an animal companion through the fly belts of Africa. Horses are smarter, faster, stronger, and more capable of supporting human needs. There's no reason to put any strain on wild animals who have evolved for millions of years to suddenly become domesticated. You may be able to tame wild animals somewhat, but it takes thousands of years for them to be truly domesticated. Thanks for watching.